Hi and welcome back to a new video. On my table we have the Corsair XC7 RGB Elite LCD water block. That's the new block from Corsair. We quickly featured this one in the Computex coverage from this year. But that's the first time that I'm going to test this water block. And since we just did some water block comparisons, I thought it would be a good timing because I still have the setup right here next to me. So it's pretty easy that I just put an, another block on it so we can see what kind of performance this block will deliver. It's also the first time that Corsair now also has a block that has this like nicely built LCD into a custom water block. And we will compare it to the previous XC7 block which we already tested in one of the previous videos. And what I also want to highlight is that in one of the previous water cooling videos with the block test, there were a lot of discussions about the flow rate because I was stating that I'm running a D5 at a reduced pump speed so I cannot hear it anymore because that's what I also run in my personal rig. And I mean, while I can give you some guidance and on that I'm just running like 30% pump speed, you don't really know what kind of flow rate I'm having in my loop because I might just use different radiator and setup. That's why I also now bought a flow sensor. So we can, before we get to that, just look at some yeah, numbers that I have in my loop so you can get a comparison number for the flow rate. We will do that in an empty loop. So it's basically just the radiator and pump, just looping around and then we get some numbers with this new aqua computer flow sensor which I bought just so you have some some baseline numbers for comparison at home and then once we add the block into the loop then we can also get some numbers on how restrictive the block is and also what kind of resulting flow speed I have in my loop and then you know if this is sufficient or not according to what you think because I read some stuff that like below 80 liters per hour will not be sufficient and you need like 150 or something like there are a lot of different opinions which is totally fine but this way I just want to give you more data so you can easily compare it at home. Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe with hundreds of thousands of servers in operation. By combining its strengths in innovative technology, attractive prices, expert customer service, Hetzner expanded its marketing growth within and outside Europe. They operate their very own high-tech data centers in Nuremberg and Falkenstein, both located in Germany and in Helsinki, Finland. Hetzner not only provides high-performance cloud servers at an affordable price, but also incredibly powerful dedicated servers capable of handling any project. Aside from these products, you can also get high-quality storage products and a variety of other services. Click on the link below and check out Hetzner's portfolio. So here we have the Aqua Computer Flow Sensor, which is currently reading zero liters per hour because the pump is not switched on. We can also read out the water temperature, but since there is no flow going through right now and we have RGB inside and everything, it will start to heat up over time slightly. But right now, there are no restrictions in the loop other than just, I mean, the quick connect fittings and the Mora from Watercool, which is sitting underneath my desk. So I will switch on the pump and we check what's basically the flow rate without restriction. Now that the pump is switched on, you can also see that the water temperature dropped. And that's not because the temperature dropped, but because we're now basically cooling the sensor as well. And yeah, flow rate is just above 150 liter per hour, which I think is sufficient. And that's, I mean, that's without any restrictions, as I said, apart from maybe quick connect and to the radiator. Now I will add the previous Corsair XC7 block to the loop and we will check the resulting flow rate. And that's how we're going to use this for the future. I will just have this flow sensor always included just above the quick connect fitting. So whatever we're going to test, if it's a GPU or a CPU water block, I will always be able to tell you the flow speed of my loop. So that's definitely some additional info that might be helpful for you. So thank you to everybody who was participating in the comments, discussing flow sensors and flow rate. It's always highly appreciated for me to get the feedback from you to also improve my videos further. Now that's actually a surprise. If I compare this to stock, I mean, we lost like four liters per hour. So this XC7 is not really restrictive. And let's just remember this value just above 150, like 152 liters per hour as reference for the new block to see if there's any kind of difference. But overall, we could already say that this block is just not restrictive at all. So let's move over to the new XC7 RGB Elite LCD. And I mean, I'm not a big fan of this type of mounting, to be fully honest. That's what comes 
from the AIO market, but it has an advantage that it's very easy and quick to mount and at the same time you can mount it from all kind of directions. So you could choose to mount the block this way or like this way or this direction, which makes tubing, especially with hard tubing, maybe easier. So depending on what kind of loop configuration you're going for, this mounting type might be an easier solution. It's also pretty quick to attach and has the typical Intel and AMD mountings that come with it. The block comes with thermal paste pre-applied, which you can use if you want to. I'm going to remove it and replace it with a different TIM because I want to make sure that I'm just not having this kind of tolerance for measurement. I want to treat all the blocks the same, so they all get the same thermal paste out of the same tube, so we don't have any kind of tolerance there. Also still have to peel off the plastic around it. And apparently, at least if I look at the marketing slides, the cold plate has a temperature sensor built in which I'm definitely curious to see how they solved this. But I'm going to do that after the testing because I want to keep the stock condition, so I'm going to test it first. While I was just trying to connect the block, I was a bit confused because there is no information about the flow direction. Neither on the block, neither is there, I don't know, like um, instruction, nor can you find it online. So I was looking on the German website, on the English website, of course, here. Then also checked if there is a manual to download or anything. There's nothing available. And so I ended up checking the non-LCD block, which has a see-through top so you can kind of estimate where the flow direction should be so I think the bottom one should be the inlet but yeah it's missing some kind of marking on the block or at least a manual or an image that tells you how to set it up so Corsair that's something you should add yeah that's that's also surprising that's pretty cool I mean same as the older XC7 it's not restrictive at all which can be good and bad at the same time. It could be bad because theoretically you could be wasting potential if you optimize the flow a little bit further so you could make the, the jet plate a little bit thinner to increase the flow rate like on the spot of the cold plate a bit further. Um, so that could be theoretically a bit of wasted potential, but that's just speculation. Apart from that, it's obviously a good thing that it's not that restrictive. So you can add a lot of more components at the same pump speed, like additional radiators and uh, like GPU cooling blocks and everything, and you will still have sufficient water flow. One thing I straight noticed about this block is that the mounting changed. That was the previous one of the previous XC7, which didn't have the ability to use any kind of screwdriver on it. That's something I disliked because you had to apply a lot of force on those tiny thumb nuts and then, yeah, it was not that convenient. But at the same time, I feel like this type of mounting was a bit more rigid because just screwing this down very subjectively now, because I also mounted a ton of coolers in my life, it felt like this is not as stable. It felt like there's almost no force needed to screw down a block. So it feels like the, just subjectively speaking, the mounting pressure is going to be lower on that block, which can be positive because you're not damaging anything. But at the same time, it could have a negative impact on the cooling performance. What I still love about those blocks, it's the same for the AIO from Corsair, is this IPS LCD with 480 times 480 pixel. It's just very high pixel density for the size of the LCD and it's, it's always a pleasure looking at them. I really enjoy them. One of the main features surely is this display which we just talked about and again I guess that's the best execution in the entire industry when it comes to having this type of display and the functionality with IQ5 is really enjoyable with all the presets you have that you can use for displaying the temperature or if you want to you can just display a GIF or image whatever but yeah. What I find a bit weird is that it says XC7 Elite LCD coolant temperature, whereas the marketing says that the temperature sensor is built into the cold plate. We will get to that in a bit. And I'm also going to rename that into water temperature. With 79.7 degrees Celsius, it just barely beats the old XC7 RGB Pro and it's about 2 to 2.5 degrees Celsius behind the top of the line blocks such as from Aquacomputer, Watercool or the current leader, the Alphacool Core 1. That said, if we just look at the RGB Pro, the previous one, the XC7, this one is about, at least in Germany, it's about 90 euro and the non-LCD version is about 115. So you're paying 25 euro extra for just a different design, but basically the same performance. 
but it just depends what you're looking for. The cooler definitely performs acceptable. As I said before, it's not going to be the best cooler on the market, but for example, if you're just getting a water cooling loop for the sake of having a low noise level, then it probably does not matter if your CPU is running two or like three degrees Celsius colder um, than with a better block. That will just depend on your own perspective and expectation you have from the block. So depending on what you're looking for, you will have to decide. I mean, in the end, the unique part about this block is going to be the LCD, which is, as I said before, high quality and the software solution with IQ is pretty good. So yeah, that will depend on you what you're looking for. But now I want to see if there's a difference to the old block and the new block when it comes to cold plate design and also the water flow. As comparison, we are starting with the old XC7 RGB. And it's also quite interesting when it comes to the flow design, at least compared to most other blocks. This is the inlet side of the block, according to Corsair. And then it's distributed across those two channels right here. On top, we have an additional piece of probably acrylic and this means that you have on the left and on the right you have the intake and on the center and on the sides you have basically the outtake. That means that the water enters here and here and flows towards the center from both sides and also outside from those, those channels, which is quite unique, I would say, these days when it comes to the flow direction, because most other coolers, they have the inlet just straight in the center and then the water is flowing to both left and right. The flow itself, or the way it's directed, is pretty similar to the previous XC7. It's just slightly optimized, because as you can see, on the right one we had two times inlet and then outlet on the center and on the sides. Now we have three inlets, so in the center, left and right, and in between the water can exit here and here, and it can also exit to the side. But we didn't really see a big difference in the temperature, so that might just be a very tiny difference when it comes to the performance itself. Same might be for the cold plate. Just visually inspecting both, I mean the outer shape is different, but just looking at the fin structure looks pretty much the same to me. I will try to inspect this further in a second when it comes to like fin density and the size and like gap in between. But just first look, it looks pretty similar. When I took it off, I spotted some thermal paste like on here and I was like, how did this get here? And then I noticed that it just came from here, which seems to be the temperature sensor that will make contact to the side of the cold plate right here. Corsair is saying they have the built-in temperature sensor in the cold plate, which is partially true, I would say, because it's not really built into the cold plate. Because if I'm reading that, my personal assumption is that it sounds like you're reading the temperature like maybe in the center close to the heat source. It's still making contact to the cold plate, so it's not entirely wrong. You can maybe let me know what you think if you read built-in temperature sensor in the cold plate, but it's more reflecting or more going to reflect the water temperature instead of like really the cold plate temperature. And I'm not sure how much it might change if you put a sudden load on the CPU and the cold plate heats up slightly, then there is always probably a slight difference between like real cold plate and water temperature. It's, it's kind of not the full cold plate temperature, but it's also not fully the, the water temperature because there is going to be an influence by the cold plate. So it's kind of, kind of a mix in between. So now I'm just going to quickly inspect uh, the fins underneath our analyzing microscope and that's how it looks like 50 times magnified you can also see some gunk in there so that's the xc7 rgb pro which i used for yeah quite a long time for testing and i can now proceed with uh, measuring some of the fins the previous rgb pro had a fin size of about 0.1 millimeter there is definitely some tolerance to it from the manufacturing could also be 0.10 and same goes to the gap in between. We have about 0.13 on one and also 0.13 on the other, but you can also visually see that there is a slight difference in between some of them. So I guess overall it's about 0.1 millimeter on the fin width and also about 0.13 on the space in between. 
And now changing to the new block, you can see it's slightly changed. We have a gap in between of about 0.11 millimeter and the fin width is about 0.13 millimeter. So there's a slight change. And one more thing I noticed is if you pay attention to just the gap or the corner in here, you can see that the fins reach all the way down to the bottom. Whereas with the previous cold plate, you can see that there is about half a millimeter of material left. So on the new one, we have a slight increase in surface area because the fins are cut lower or cut to a longer direction than with the previous cooler. Now I also spent the time counting each fin and I came up with an amount of 116 fins across this cooling plate of the new cooler. In the end, you will have to decide if $200 is worth getting this block. Performance wise, as expected, this is not winning any kind of awards. And also as expected, it kind of performs similar to the previous XC7 RGB Pro because they're still using the same type of cold plate. It has a slightly optimized flow, which I just couldn't see why it's making a big difference, at least in testing. Performance was pretty much identical between those two. So it will depend on your own choice pretty much what you prefer when it comes to aesthetics. If you're looking for a cooler that has an LCD included, Corsair is doing this extremely well, then you will have to decide if $200 is worth getting this. If you might already use the Corsair IQ equipment, then this might be a good choice for you. Otherwise, especially talking about the non-LCD version, might just be worth getting the previous version because they perform exactly the same, just have a different look. So it will depend on your personal preference, what you want to get. I also have this XG3 RGB GPU block. I, there's something I have to show you quickly. So that's the block and uh, this is supposed to be the RX version, which means for AMD. And if we pay attention, Corsair is listing the RX series as NVIDIA GeForce 7900 XTX. That's an interesting card. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to yeah, also test this cooler yet. I will maybe do that next week or the week after. I also received a new pump for Corsair Link. Also didn't have time to test that, but I might do that later. Yeah, so it's an okay block. It doesn't win any kind of performance prizes, but just performs okay, I would say, and has good aesthetics, good integration into Corsair IQ. That's about it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.